All right. They have they have set me free. So a- applause for these guys right here. So yes. Hopefully it will be a little bit more interesting if I can move around. I will probably trip over this a little bit. Uh, welcome, man. Uh, it's 5 p.m. and I can't believe you guys are all here. So like, nice job, like make it this. Thank you for filling the room. This is awesome. It'll be well worth it. Uh, so the uh, sort of title I have up here is Being Dangerous with Twig. It's a slightly different title on the actual thing, but the, we had a, such a cool Harry Potter font for Dangerous, I didn't want to change it to something else, <laughs> so that's why we did that. And hold on one second here. Let's hit that. The, um, the actual unofficial talk, uh, title of this talk is this, Being Dangerous with Twig, so you can uh, basically read through this. All the features of Twig basically right there, ready to go. So, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to kind of uh, distill all the great things about Twig down into one title. So that's actually the real title of this talk. All right, uh, this is where I get to talk about myself. Um, I'm the lead for the Symphony documentation, actually. We actually have a really great team around me, but I'm the lead for the Symphony documentation. If you are interested in... Um, using Symphony, you start using Symphony and you hit some problems, please do make uh, come over to GitHub, make a pull request. If you've never done that before, we're the friendliest place to start doing that. If you don't even speak English as your first language, it's cool. We have a great team that will help you like fix any mistakes you have. Um, and Symphony, it was originally originated out of um, France. So if you do speak English, you actually kind of immediately rise to the top of the Symphony documentation world. So like, ooh, you speak English as a first language? It's like, all right, we need you. So this is a great way to contribute. Um, I work for KP Labs US. Uh, we are Symphony Consulting, and I'm a writer for KP University. We do screencasts on Symphony, dependency injection, those types of things. Some of them are paid, some of them are free, like dependency injection, so check that out as well. And my biggest accomplishment in life um, is that I married up. <laughs> I'm married way up, uh, so I'm the husband of the much more talented Leanna Pelham, who is right here in front trying to hide. Hey, Zeus, you should like point. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, right there. Yeah, so you can give her condolences later. Um, okay, on to the uh, serious stuff. Uh, birthday wishes. So let's start. Happy birthday to my dad. Uh, so my dad is now unofficial. Sort of. This is this is as close as my dad will ever get to a tech conference. So happy birthday to my dad. Let's see who else here. Ah, happy birthday to Anne Sophie. She is the uh, the brains behind Sensio Labs. You may have heard of Fabian Potencier, the lead developer of Symphony. Actually, she's the brains behind everything. So it's her birthday as well, and she is here. And I don't know if she's actually in the room or not. So, but find her later and, and wish her happy birthday as well. Uh, let's see what other friends have birthdays today. Ah, Rafael Nadal and Anderson Cooper. So. <laughs> Um, they're here in the conference somewhere, I think, so if you see them, wish them a happy birthday as well. All right, now the for serious, for serious stuff. <laughs> Twig. All right, so why Twig? Act one. Um, because template engines are awesome, and so let's, let's go and, and invent something. Actually, I'm going gonna, gonna to kick off my sandals here. There we go. Um, so let's imagine that uh, we have a templating engine called Ryan's Fantasy Templating Engine. And, and templating engines are really simple. Okay, we have this object here. We can kind of load a template called DrupalCon.php. And then we're going to, when we render it, we'll pass it an array of variables. So I'm passing a, a variable called place. And then there's the DrupalCon.php template down there. It would now echo the place uh, variable, and maybe we can call some other functions. Okay. You guys are all somewhat familiar with this idea. The big takeaway here is that templating engines are just an input-output. We basically say the input is this templating file and these variables, and the output is the, the finished HTML or the finished string. Very, very simple tool. Um, this is good. Oh, and the other, one other thing, of course, templating engines are, they should give you is some extras, right? Because we're not in PHP code. We're not writing, like, hardcore business logic. Um, so it should give us some shortcuts, maybe some functions, maybe some other nice sugar so that we can keep our templates looking nice and do uh, template-y type of things. So ultimately, like, a template engine is just a tool that you can use. So why not just use PHP templates? If you guys have done, obviously, Drupal 7 theme, you're used to sort of the PHP templates. And there's nothing wrong with PHP templates, but there are a couple of disadvantages. One of them, and maybe you care about this, maybe you don't, is uh, that uh, PHP templates are actually like a big hack. If you've ever looked at a PHP template engine, there's a spot that actually says 
include whatever your template file is, .php. Actually, before this, it does like an output start. It basically stops the output buffering. It includes that file physically, and then it stops the output buffering and tries to capture whatever it is that you just echoed out. So it's kind of this weird little hack in the middle of your code. Um, even Symfony's PHP, uh, Symfony has like a PHP templating engine, and Symfony's code is like all beautiful, object-oriented, dependency injection, and all of a sudden in the middle of this one beautiful class, you have like this include statement with output buffering and other ugly stuff. Um, there's also no, uh, no template inheritance or fake template inheritance. I'll talk about template inheritance. It's going to help um, you guys out uh, immensely in Drupal. Um, and, and there's no isolation, which means that uh, the PHP templates have access to like all the variables, global variables, global functions. You can make database calls, which, I mean, I, some, some of you might be thinking, like, that's awesome. I like making database calls from my template. But, you know, sort of not awesome. Yeah, I'm seeing this one, one guy's like, no, please take that, that weapon away from me. All right, so we want the, uh, we want to keep the, the kind of brevity of templates, but we want uh, kind of the isolation of object-oriented programming. So introducing Twig, et cetera, it's fast, blah, 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 blah. This is basically off of Twig's homepage. Uh, so let's actually see what this is. So thing number one is that uh, Twig is, you'll notice, is very, very short. Its syntax is very short and easy to read. And ultimately, uh, it compiles down to a PHP object. So we have a Twig template, but when Twig actually renders that, it compiles it down to a PHP object or PHP class. And you'll see that in a second. So let's uh, see this in action. All right, so this is our PHP template, not like a Drupal 7 theme, but like a, you know, if we were to write a PHP template, include header. We have some blogs, echoing data, et cetera, et cetera. Fairly straightforward stuff. All right, so you ready? And there's the Twig version of that. It got slightly smaller, which is good. That's not the whole point, though. So it's basically a very similar thing. We're iterating over the blogs. We're echoing a blog's title. We're echoing some date stuff. I'm going to go through all of the syntaxes and things so you don't have to be like, what is the curly brace percent thing doing? We'll talk about that in a second. But it looks very similar. And ultimately, you may not care about this. Oh, I totally meant to get rid of that text behind there. Ultimately, not care about this, but this is actually what it compiles down to. You'll see this if you dig inside in Drupal 8. You can actually go find the compiled version of your template. In Twig, we had a block body. We'll talk about blocks. It has to do with inheritance. We have a block body, and it iterates over the blogs um, and starts dumping some stuff out. Here, we have a block body function. And then you can see it echoes some content, and then it does a for each, then it echoes an h2. I mean, it's just literally in ugly PHP code, exactly what you did inside of your Twig template. So again, like you're not going to care about that day by day, but that's what's really going on behind the scenes. And heck, if you really get, if you really get bamboozled by something in Twig, it's acting weird. You could just go look at that file and say, what the heck are you doing, Twig? Oh, OK. Um, so backing up, like a moment of templating Zen, I want to remember that the purpose of templates is to express presentation, not program logic. And that goes back to that not making database calls things. So Twig is going to be uh, something that, this is a nice to have, something that is going to look cleaner and simpler. It's going to simplify things. So we can kind of focus on uh, what we're trying to um, display and not like all the weird function calls we need to do. And it's also going to sandbox this a little bit, which may make people uncomfortable at first. You're like, whoa, wait, you can't. I can't call PHP functions anymore from inside Twig. That's true. You can't just call random PHP functions from inside Twig. But trust me, you're not going to get overly sandboxed. It's going to properly sandbox you. And if you do need to do something custom in Twig, I'll show you later, there are ways to do that. So ultimately, you're like, no, I actually do need to be able to call this PHP function from Twig. You can do that. But we want to start here and uh, kind of like simplify our templates. Uh, by the way, this is significant Django, uh, you know, Python uh, framework, because uh, Twig is based off of Jinja, which is Django's templating engine. It's kind of like a side benefit. Um, like when uh, Twig first came out and was getting popular, um, all the editors instantly had code highlighting for it. Because they were like, yes, we support Twig. They're like, add Twig, just make a copy of the Jinja highlighting, and now you know, then our editor will have uh, support for it. So there's like little overlap things like that that are, that are kind of nice because it shares the same syntax. Uh, and last thing before we actually dive in is that Twig can be used anywhere. So again, just Twig is a tool. We're going to talk about uh, what it can do, and I'll show you kind of what it looks like inside of Drupal. Um, but it can just be used anywhere. And I know lots of people that bring this into like their random legacy PHP projects. It looks like this. You create a couple objects. You render a template. You pass a variable in, kind of like what I saw before. 
And then down below, and again, I'll talk about the syntax, um, just echoing out that name variable. So it's all about having a twig template and just passing variables into it. So you can totally just use it directly. You can see it was all of four lines of code to initialize the whole twig engine and then render something. All right, so let's talk about how simple twig can be. All right, so twig has exactly three tags. So Twig, obviously, you guys could kind of tell. Twig is just like PHP, where if you write HTML, it's just HTML until you open up, open up PHP, until you open up to a Twig, uh, open up Twig tag. There's three tags, comment tag, the print tag, and the block tag. So first, the hard one, the uh, comment tag. I call this the do nothing tag. Curly brace, percent. It's a comment. Easy. It can be single line. It can be multiple line. It does nothing. It's a comment. Boom. 33% of the way home. The second one, the say something tag. If what you want to do is print content, if, if like ultimately you're like, I'm about to multiply three times five and reverse it and do all those other things so that I can print it, you're going to have curly brace, curly brace, and then whatever it is that you're printing. So you see up top, I have curly, curly, print me. That's literally just printing the string. That's like echo, you know, string, uh, uh, print me. Down there where I have curly, curly, foo, foo is a variable in that case. So it works just like PHP, except we don't have the dollar sign. So foo is a variable there. And I'll talk about the little pipe thing down there, but name is a variable down there. Upper is what's called a filter, and I'll talk about those in a second. The point is, if you're printing something, it is curly, curly. I don't care if you're you know, doing a million other things. If ultimately you're printing something, it's curly, curly. So that's number two. So now we're most of the way there. And number three, to round it off, I sounded like a, some sort of an announcer right there. Number three, the do something tag. If you're not printing something, but you're doing something, some sort of language construct like an if statement, an if statement is not printing something, that's some sort of language construct, a for, like a loop, that's not printing something. You might print something inside of there, but that's not printing on its own. If you're doing something, it's curly brace percent. The key thing with this, this uh, do something tag is that it's always curly brace percent and then a keyword like curly brace percent set or curly brace percent if. There are a finite number of these do something tags. Like you can't just say curly brace percent DrupalCon. That doesn't make sense. It's curly brace percent set, curly brace percent if. And if you go to Twig's documentation, it'll actually tell you the 15 or so uh, uh, do something tags there are. There aren't that many. Okay, so you just you'll kind of get used to the five or so that you need, like if statements and loops uh, and a couple other ones. And that's what you're gonna have, and that's what you'll use. Um, and some of these have um, end tags and some of them don't. So you can see the set there. It's just like curly brace percent set. And then with the if, there's like an opening if. And then there's a closing if as well. So the big takeaway here is three tags. One does nothing. One prints things. And the third one does things. But there's only about five or so do something tags that you even care about. And that's it. All right, so this is where it's even going to start looking even more like what you guys are used to, like uh, PHP land. So everything is uh, an expression. So actually, let's talk about expressions in PHP. We all know what an expression is, even if it's not a super familiar term with us. So the expressions are the inside. So in PHP, the dollar sign foo dot dollar sign bar is an expression. We all know the expression gets this variable, concatenates it with that variable. That's the expression. I is less than 50. That's an expression. We all understand how these work. This is the core of PHP, in the core of JavaScript, the core of every single language has these expressions. So Twig also has expressions, and they're going to feel very, very similar. It's the exact, the guts of Twig are the exact same things that you're already doing. So for example, the foo up there, that's a variable. It's not a very complicated expression, but just like dollar sign foo, there's foo. Um, foo equals bar, that's just like PHP. That's an expression. You're setting a variable. Um, the, let's see here, which one should I go to? 
Um, range. I'll explain some of these pieces here in a second. Range is a function. We all understand how functions work. This is a function that takes three arguments. I don't need to explain that to you guys because you guys all know functions like the back of your hand. Twig has functions. They look and work exactly the same way as they do in PHP and JavaScript and every other language that you've ever used. So on the inside, Twig is exactly the same as every language that you're used to. And I'll show a couple uh, more examples later. Um, and then I just want to highlight here, I have green is, you know, just remember when you use the do something tag, the curly brace percent, it's always curly brace percent and then like the one keyword that's like, okay, which do something tag are you using? Um, so expressions can consist of many things. Again, just like as I'm going through this, add dollar signs to whatever I say and be like, oh yeah, it's just like PHP. Um, by the way, how about that photo, right? Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Leanna actually added that. It caught me off guard like when I was going through the slides like half an hour ago. I forgot about it. All right, so what kinds of things can we have inside of expressions? We can have strings, numbers, and variables, just like PHP. There's a string, there's a couple of numbers, and there's a variable. Variables don't have the dollar sign. Other than that, they're the same, so kind of like JavaScript in that sense. Okay, we got it. What else? Arrays and hashes. So this is a slightly different thing than, uh, than we have in PHP. So in PHP, we have associative arrays and indexed arrays, but there's no difference. It's just did you set like a key or not set a key. In uh, Twig, there is a difference. Um, so if you actually have an array, an indexed array, you use the square bracket. So I have an, or apples and oranges. So if you think of that in PHP, it's like an array whose zero index is apples and whose one index is oranges. And then down there, if you actually have an associative array called a hash, you'll have the uh, curly brace guys on the bottom. So you guys key value pair. And notice this is exactly like JSON. It's, this is the JSON syntax. And um, uh, yeah, exactly like JSON. Um, what was I gonna say about that? Oh, uh, one quick uh, thing. So plant this in the back of your head for later. Uh, this is called a hash, the second thing. And you notice that hashes have curly braces. And notice that curly braces are also what are always on the outside of twig. So sometimes you'll hear an error in Twig that says like uh, unclosed hash on line 13 of your Twig template. And you're like, what the heck is a hash? Is that the pound sign? Is it saying I have an unclosed pound sign? No, it's actually talking about unclosed curly brace. So hash is curly brace. So Twig error will talk about hashes. It's talking about curly braces. All right, um, uh, tw uh, bleh, tw Twig also has operators, exactly like before. There's some nice additions to the operators. We have plus, of course. We have an and operator, which is a, you know, equivalent to ampersand, ampersand. We also have an in operator, which is basically similar to using the in array function. So this is kind of the syntax sh syntactic sugar things I'm talking about. You don't have to call an in array function. You can kind of just use human language and say, if Apple is in that array, then let's do something. The one dot dot 10, that dot dot is also an operator. One dot dot 10 turns into an array with 10 elements. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. That kind of stuff. Uh, and then the tilde is actually the concatenation, so the dot inside of PHP. So same exact things. Well, I mean, same exact things, plus we have a couple extra things. So filters, I talked about these earlier. So, so far we basically have you know, like numbers and variables, and we have operators, like the most basic day one of stuff that you would have learned uh, uh, in any programming language. Filters are like one of the uh, first different things. They're very, very easy, and they're, very, they're one of the things that are going to make your templates really, really look good and be very powerful. So a filter is basically you have some value to the left, like let's say that sum underscore date, that's a variable. Let's say that's like a date time object that's set to yesterday. Uh, we use the pipe. And it basically sends that value into the date filter. So if you're, you know, unless, you know, if you're used to the Unix uh, command line, this is exactly the same thing. You always like, you know, do something and like pipe it into grep and whatever is returned like goes into grep. It's the exact same thing. So that some date goes through the date filter and the date filter, you know, basically that uh, is the format that it's going to turn into. Same thing down there. We have a range function. Again, functions work just like normal functions. Um, the range function, by the way, is another way to make like an array that's like 1 through 10. Or sorry, in this case, 0 through 10. So you have the range, and we pipe that into the reverse filter, which reverses it. Again, if you look at Twig's docs, there's just a bunch of built-in filters, maybe 30 or so built-in filters, upper, lower, reverse, and I'll show you a couple other ones. Um, so you'll notice that they're exactly like functions. Like, let's look at that reverse filter. Let's imagine that that was a function, not a filter. How would that read? We'd actually have four i in 
reverse, open parentheses, range, open parentheses, zero, comma, 10, close parentheses, close parentheses, right? We just wrap it. This looks a lot better, and that's basically the purpose of filters. Filters are just like functions, except because you can put them to the right, you don't end up with like parentheses on top of parentheses on top of parentheses. So it's just like a nice syntax thing. Uh, and of course, functions. We have functions. I won't even talk about them. There are built-in functions. And, uh, and, you can, and well, I'll talk about that in a second. There are built-in functions that work exactly like you would expect. So in this case, we're actually piping through the date filter, and then I'm using this constant function to supply the format that I want. Cool. So we have strings, numbers, and variables, arrays and hashes, operators. That's all basic stuff. Filters are a new thing, but they're super duper easy. Um, and functions are exactly like we have inside of PHP. So it's the exact same thing plus a couple of extras. And the fact that you can modify or add to any of these. So like the even, uh, well, if you want to add your own custom filter, no problem. Custom function, no problem. If you want to add your own custom operator, because you're like, you know what would be great for job security is if whenever I added something together, I used like, two M's. I was like, if three M M five equals eight, ha 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 ha, job security. <laughs> you can do that. You can introduce your own operators there or even change the plus operator to be a minus, right? That would be kind of fun. <laughs> Good. Everyone's like, I thought this was supposed to make my templates safer. <laughs> cool. So let's kind of see, uh, kind of step up to a challenge here. So let's imagine that we have an array of like widgets, like some, some, um, uh, imaginary uh, object called widget. And we're going to pass an array of these widgets into a Twig template. We're going to iterate over them. I know we don't really do this anymore because we have uh, fancier CSS, but we're going to add some odd even rows as we iterate over them, and uh, we're going to create some like pagination. All right, so here's where we're starting. So the do something tag, like one of the few do something tags that you will know, like the back of your hand, is the four. By the way, there's no four and four each inside of t uh, Twig. It's always four. Four is the loop. So I have some widgets variable, and it's for widget in widgets. So it's actually the opposite order of uh, PHP, where we say like for each widgets as widget. So for widget in widgets, we iterate over it, and we have a widget variable. We say widget.name and widget.body. So imagine like widgets like uh, some sort of uh, object that has like a name property and a body property on it. Cool? And you can see we're using the block tag, the do something tag, and we're using the say something tag. Really, really simple. All right, so let's go further. All right, so let's use a couple filters. Boom, widget.name, pipe, title. That's a built-in filter. It title cases it. Easy. Next, widget.body. Ah, cool, but we want to do a strip tags on there. So let's use that built-in filter, strip tags. And let's just keep going and uh, put that into a truncate filter. And that's basically going to shorten it to a certain amount. The truncate filter also has an optional argument, which is the number, I believe, of characters that you want to truncate it at. So we could have said truncate, open parentheses, 100 or something like that. Cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. Hmm. <clears throat> that, got, that caught me off guard. And I just went through this slide like 10 minutes ago. Okay, so the truncate filter isn't technically part of uh, Twig's core, but there's a library of uh, extensions. Um, I'll talk about, ex well, I'll talk about extensions right here. Um, extensions, everything inside of Twig, all the way down to you know the functions, the filters, the plus sign, those are all added via an extension or a group of extensions. Extensions are Twig's plugin system. So if without any extensions, Twig actually doesn't do anything other than kind of understand what curly curly means and what curly percent means, but it can't even add things together. So even the core functionality is an extension class that says, I have a plus sign, and when you put plus between two things, here's what that means. So when you guys want to add your own stuff, it's going to be you adding an extension that says, I have a new filter or a new function called this. Um, the uh, library on the bottom there is just a repository full of a bunch of useful extensions. So if you plug those into your project, then you, there's some extra extensions you have, like the um, truncate filter. And I'm going to talk about extensions a little bit more in a second. All right, let's keep going. All right. So here, I want to do the odd even. So cycle is a function. It's kind of a weird function where you basically kind of give it like a number to the right, and it just kind of goes back and forth over even and odd. So if 5 gives you even, or 5 gives you odd, 6 gives you even, 7 gives you odd, that type of thing. 
So that's cool. So that's a function uh, right there. The real takeaway I want to show you is um, that loop variable. That loop variable comes out of thin air because we're inside of a for. Like, I don't see it here, but like we're looping over our widgets for widget in widgets. As soon as you're inside of a for, you have a loop variable. And you can say things like loop.index, and that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If you want a zero index, there's a loop.index0. That's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whichever one you want. Um, there's also other things like loop.last. So you can say things like, I actually have this in a second, like if loop.last, then I need to print something. So it kind of gives you context. So no more like setting an I and then you know, uh, uh, doing like a plus plus operator on it to try to keep track of like where you are inside of your um, array. All right. So a couple more filters here. The date filter, you guys saw that before. So widget.addedat, at, and we can just pipe that right into date and do whatever format we want there. And that one's kind of cool down on the bottom. Let's say that widget.tags is some sort of an array of tags. We can send it to the join filter which is the, oh, okay. All right, I'm going to say what I think it is, and I always get it wrong. I have to look it up. That's just like implode, right? Implodes, explode, which one is which? Implode. Yes, thought so. It's just like implode that takes the array and turns it into a comma-separated string, and then, heck, let's pipe that into lower and, and uh, lowercase all of those. So you can see, like, what that, think about what that would look like inside of PHP. You all know how to do it. It's simple. It's the exact same words, practically, but you have things wrapped inside of things wrapped inside of things. Cool. So, you know, all this is basically for, like, you know, one of the biggest benefits is the convenience of readability. Like, this right here, that's actually something you can do. That's built in. If you need to see if something's divisible by, you don't have to do, like, a percent four equals equals zero modulus type of a thing uh, or walk your front-end uh, uh, developer through, like, the modulus kind of stuff. You can just say, is divisible by four. That, by the way, is called a test. I didn't talk about that yet, but Twig has built-in tests, like is odd, that's a test, is even, is divisible by, is empty, is defined. Those are all things that you can just say at any point um, inside of your Twig template. And you can even add your own. Like I've seen a project before where somebody was selling uh, products, and they actually had in the Twig template, like, if product is purchased. And what that actually did is looked up for the current user to see if the current user owned that uh, product and then returned true or false, which is pretty cool. Oh, and a uh, little sugar here. Notice I have a for else tag. How cool is that? So no more like, you know, for and then if it was empty type of deal. Uh, if there's no widgets, then you automatically fall into your else of your for. Cool. And then uh, pagination, this is just another example. We can use a radius function, which basically if, if the current page is equal to 5, then that gives you an array of 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So now we're iterating over page in the array of 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that's going to print us like pages 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And boom, there's that loop.last guy again coming in to help us out, you know, because we want to add pipes, but we don't want an extra pipe on the end. So really easy, loop.last. And you'll also notice, just like PHP, just like JavaScript, if you're into it, we have the ternary syntax. So notice I'm echoing loop.last, question mark, empty string, uh, colon, uh, single pipe. And it even has the shorter thing where you can do like question mark, colon, all or even shorter if you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah. But the radius function doesn't actually exist either, which is cool. I did that on purpose. It's kind of handy because I want you guys show, I want to show you guys um, what the Twig extension looks like for this. So, okay, so we're like, this was really cool. I, I do want that radius function. It's very simple functionality. So let's create that. Again, it's called a Twig extension. And I already told you this. Everything in Twig is loaded by an extension, and you can change stuff if you want to. Uh, by the way, if you want to get really crazy, you can even change the curly curlies to other things. So that's like mega job security. Change curly curly to QQ or something like that and really get crazy. Um, so a Twig extension is just a class. It has to extend that Twig underscore extension. And then because we want to add a function, you override the get functions function uh, to add your function. Um, there's also a get filters function, a get tests function, a get operators function. It's just override whichever thing you're trying to add. And it just looks like that. Hey, when somebody uses the radius function inside of any Twig template, I want you to call that compute radius function and pass the arguments that they're passing. And it's just that easy. So the Twig extension is just a map from when you call radius in Twig, call compute radius inside of my code, and I'll take it from here. 
and it's that, and it's that simple. And this is something that you will probably do in your code. It's, this is not like a super edge case. Like you're not going to do this every day, but it's, it's fairly common to add like uh, extra filters and functions in your code. Um, and yes, there is a missing piece of like hooking this up. Like how does Drupal magically know that this class exists? Um, I'm not going to show that here, but it's a small amount of code involving services. It's kind of like I'd have to get into service stuff, but basically it's like four lines of code. Once you are comfortable with the service thing, it's like four lines of code that says I have this class um, and it's a twig extension. It's a little bit of YAML that you would do to basically hook this up inside of a configuration file. Cool. Oh, yeah. And uh, if you want to know about that side of things, the services side of things, I do have a talk tomorrow morning about uh, Symphony and Solidex. We're going to talk about services and all that kind of stuff. So if that's kind of, we'll kind of push that off until then. Cool. All right. This is what I wanted to get to. So theming in Drupal 7 versus Drupal 8. All right. So this is what, um, by the way, I come from a Symphony background. So uh, my Drupal 7 experience uh, started like four days ago. So. But, I, but it's really cool. I actually like, couldn't understand things really well because I could look at how it's done in Drupal 8 and look how it's done in Drupal 7, and uh, it all made good sense to me. So the cool thing is the changes are actually very underwhelming. And it's first of all, it's, it's basically the change from PHP tags to Twig tags, and then it's just the renaming of some files. So like you guys all know page.tpl.php, it's page.html.twig. Node.tpl.php is node.html.twig. Theme.info is now a theme.info.yml. And you guys probably know at this point in Drupal 8, like a lot of things have turned into YAML, which um, looks basically like what, you, what we had before, but slightly different. Um, and I'll show this in a second. The, um, the override functions that used to live in templates.php, those are also now their own Twig templates. So we used to have like theme name underscore field underscore underscore taxonomy underscore term underscore reference as a function. It's now basically the same uh, thing, except it's a Twig template. And we can actually shed the theme name at the front of it, so it's actually a little bit shorter. All right, so this is this should look familiar. It's the top of um, uh, like a kind of standard node.tpl.php. Cool, got this. And wait for it, wait for it. Okay, boom. There is the Twig version. Hold on, let's do that again. Watch how simple that changes. Like, oh, look at I node equals print node dash nid. Node, node.id, basically the exact same thing. Uh, da, 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 ec, uh, a print render title prefix, echo, echo title prefix. When you look at the files next to each other, you're like, they almost literally just replaced the PHP with Twig. They didn't go ahead and like go to a next step and be like, let's change the entire philosophy of the theming system. It's just kind of this switch to a new engine, and now you have new tools because Twig gives you all kinds of new tools inside of there. Um, one cool thing that I did here, uh, somebody talked about once, was uh, inside of Drupal 7, you kind of needed to know when to use the render function and when not to use the render function. Um, and in uh, Drupal 8, you never use the render. There is no render function. You just echo it. Okay, and it kind of takes care of if it needs to kind of go through the rendering thing or not. A um, couple cool things in here. You can see the without filter. That's actually something that was added by uh, Drupal. And it basically takes something and removes an array key from it. So you can see we have attributes up there, but it's like, ooh, but don't print the ID or role attribute. So let's do attributes pipe without that. Same thing with the content. It's like I want to print the content, but I don't want to print the links. So in Drupal 7, we would do like a hide function, and, um, and then we uh, render the content. So now we just kind of do it all once and just say kind of pipe without. So you can kind of the value is kind of passing from left to right. The links are being removed from it. Uh, and uh, this one is even better. So I talked about the function override. So this is what it looked like in Drupal 7. And if you can kind of look closely, it's printing out a UL and an LI tag inside of there. And in Drupal 8, that is now a Twig template. And it looks so much better. It's, br it's, it's a long line, so it's actually breaking onto multiple lines. It looks cleaner when you don't have a small screen like I do. But it's a Twig template, which is where HTML belongs. And we're just printing things out. Both of these just build an LI, UL with an LI. And now it's much, much simpler. All right, cool. So this is the last. This is the last act here. This is where things get really good. So one, uh, debugging. This is uh, <laughs> first time I used Twig. I was like, help! I don't have var dump. It's terrible. I don't know what's going on. I want to call a PHP function. I want. I want to go home. Um, yeah, because you're like sandbox. Like I know how PHP, but I don't know things inside of Twig. So debugging is a really, really important thing. Uh, 
So first thing is, inside of settings.php, there is a settings twig underscore debug equals true. If you're theming, this needs to be on for two reasons. One, twig is compiled, well, the most important reason, twig is compiled down to a PHP. If this is off, you change the twig template, it doesn't recompile. So you'll change your twig template and you won't see the difference. You turn this to true, you change your twig template and it will update automatically. You don't need to like clear, the, you go through drush and clear the cache, you go through the admin and clear the cache. As long as you have this to true, it's gonna automatically happen for you. Um, the second thing, which is really, really cool idea, is as soon as you turn the debugging on, your HTML source code gets littered with all these comments which are basically hints as to what's going on behind the scenes and what type of um, template overrides you could be using at that point to, uh, to use those things. Or uh, even said better, where the heck that's coming from. Like where the heck is that field stuff coming from? In the oh, it's coming from core slash module slash system slash blah, 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 blah. So you have a map right in there. It says like, this is where this craziness is coming from. And you're like, awesome, I know how to override that. And you do have var dump. Yes, it's called dump. Hey, they even saved you the var underscore. That's awesome. Uh, so again, curly, curly, right? Because we're printing something, and then it's just dump. Behind the scenes, this is literally using, um, I believe, you're literally using var dump. I haven't actually looked at that, but I remember somebody saying that once. And this is what it looks like. Um, obviously, it goes down further. But it's basically, oh, actually, so. It's dumping everything that you have access to. So that's another important thing. You're like, I'm in a template. And I know all the templates have like 150 lines of comments on the top that say exactly like what variables you should have access to. But even without that, I can turn my volume up. Even without that, you can just dump everything. I don't know what I have access to. So this is everything that you have access to. Boy, that's a little hard to look at. So let's just dump the names of the variables we have access to. By the way, if you Google for like Dru uh, Drupal Twig debugging, they have a page that like talks about several of these tricks. So even if you don't get like this part on there, underscore context is not something you ever normally need to worry about. It's just technically a variable that's floating around that contains all of your variables. This will be the only time I guarantee you ever see underscore context. I actually didn't even remember what it was. I had to look it up because I've never used it before this and I've been using Twig for years and years. Um, so actually, underscore context is an array holding all of your variables. We pipe it, filter, through the keys, which is array keys, PHP function. And you guys can tell what we get out. We get out the keys, the names of the keys, and it looks like that. And that's actually the full list. That's really, really powerful. And then, of course, you're like, oh, that's right. I have a user variable. That's what I was looking for. What the heck is the user variable? Oh, I didn't actually put that there. Um, you can actually then do dump open parentheses user. So you can do dump without arguments, dump everything, or you can dump specific things. Just dump the user variable and start drilling down further into that. All right, inheritance. Okay, so let's imagine for a second that we have a node.html.twig, cool? And this is obviously only part of it. And here's the header, and this is the unchanged header. This is, well, more or less unchanged. I might have shortened a few things. This is the header. But notice I've put a block header and an end block around it. Those are do something tags. If I only made this change, nothing happens to my application yet. But we're, we're setting the stage for chaos. Okay? So this is node.html.twig. Now, let's say that we need to modify what the node looks like just for the article node type. So again, the name, the way you do that, um, the way you do that inside of Drupal 8 is exactly like Drupal 7 ends up being what article dash dash node.html.twig. So it's the exact same thing as Drupal 7, just .html.twig on the end. So remember, I have this block header and block around the whole thing. So normally, if I needed to, let's say, uh, change the header, like I want the rest of the templates exactly the same as the normal one, but the header needs to be different. I would need to either do something clever or weird or basically copy node.html.twig to node-article.html.twig. I realize I just said the name wrong in the wrong order a second ago. I would need to copy the whole thing, right, and just change the one piece. Not anymore. This is the entirety of your template. You say extends, and then you set that block. What this says, it says, actually, I want to use node.html.twig. That's really what should be rendered. But I want to replace anything that's in my parent template's block header, like we said, block header, end block. I want to replace that with what I have here. So that you can add as many blocks as you want to your you know, sort of parent templates. Um, the more blocks you add, the more extensible it is. 
So if you need to, like, oh, it's, it's almost perfect, I just need to override this one tiny little thing, then add a block around there, and you have a new extension point. It's that easy. And we could have other blocks. We could have, like, another block body, block something, block something. We could have as many blocks down in this uh, template as we want. And let's say that we don't actually want to completely override the header block. We just want to surround the header block with an extra class or an extra div with a class. The parent function says, go echo out my parent's contents. So this is going to take div class equals article, and then it's going to use the default content from our parent block. And this is like one of the most exciting things. Um, I didn't even do you know Drupal theme, but like when I saw this, I was like, this is a home run right here. Um, like I would use the heck out of this. Cool. One other thing is the dot notation, which I haven't explicitly said, but I think you guys kind of get it. Um, so in Drupal seven. Um, you kind of had to decide or know whether something was an array or an object, right? Because they have two different syntaxes, even though they kind of work the same way. In Twig, we don't care. Um, so here, we, just say, we say no.ed and page.header. We don't care if they're an array, and we don't care if they're an object, because the dot notation takes care of that for us. So the dot notation kind of goes through a cycle. says, OK, is this an object that has a public property? If it is, I'll just, I'll just go get that for you. Oh, it's not? Well, is, it, uh, is it an array that maybe has that key? Oh, it is? OK, I'll just go grab that. Oh, neither of those. Maybe it's an object that has like a git header function. So when I say like you know, page.header, header is not a property, or it's a private property maybe. It'll actually call git header, the git header function, and uh, bring that back to you. So you're, you know, when you're going through theming, you don't care about any of this. You don't care about what kind of data type it is or anything like that. You just care about page, you know, page.header and kind of getting right to it. Uh, I don't have an example for this because so I just wanted to kind of mention it. Um, one of the benefits of Twig is that uh, being that it's not PHP, it's actually safe to evaluate. So we would never, would ne never I'm going to see who, ha who holds their head in shame when I say this. We would never store PHP in the database and then uh, evaluate it. Right? That would be very, very dangerous if we open that up. But you actually can do that inside of Twig. You can actually say, we can actually have a Twig template stored um, in the database, um, or some part of Twig templates, or maybe it's an email template, and you want your client to be able to modify parts of that. You can actually store that safe in the template, and then evaluate it later. You can even whitelist what they have access to. You can say, you know what? You, uh, let's only give them access to like these two functions and those four filters, and here are the only two variables that we're going to pass them, and like their sandbox um, outside of that. And you can actually safely do that kind of stuff. And I thought I heard this morning in the keynote that somebody was maybe working on that, or somebody said something that made me think that somebody might be working on that. So, so there might be, I Googled for it, but I couldn't find anything. Last thing I'm going to talk about is twig.js. So we can obviously render twig on the server side, but you can also render twig via JavaScript, which is very interesting. And I have done this before, and I just talked to a startup company that is doing this as well um, last week. Um, and this is what it looks like. This is not actually technically related to the Twig project. This is just some other community member that basically ported Twig to JavaScript. Um, like I said, I haven't actually used this. So it works the same way. Template equals Twig. You basically kind of pass in what the, the template looks like. And obviously, you could um, store your templates like um, uh, in a different way and deliver them um, kind of like a, via script tag or an external script tag that's brought in or something like that. But the point is you basically make your Twig template available on the client side. And then you can just call template.render and pass in your variables. This is very interesting when you have the problem of um, I have a very responsive front end, uh, but I still actually need to render a full page on page load. Because uh, you know we're still kind of, I know it's changing, but we're still kind of in the area where if you have an entire page rendered client side, it's not really going to get indexed. I know there's some ways you can kind of go around that. I've nothing that I've ever trusted with any of my sites. Um, so I, I actually use this on the homepage of Camp University because we want to like have a, a real page load, but that's normal HTML. And then when you click on stuff, we actually go and get JSON and use the JSON to re-render our Twig templates to like update things in the front end uh, via the client side. So it's cool that it's on both sides, so you can take advantage of that. And oh, and this is the project. Uh, the key there is uh, it's called Just John. There's another one by another guy named um, Johannes Schmidt. Schmidt Joe. Uh, in my opinion, it's not been worked on quite as actively, so you want the just on one. It's the one I use. It's the one the other company I know uses. Cool. And that's it. So thank you guys very, very much. And uh, I'm going to open it up to, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and if you, uh, Camp University, if you guys want a free 
um, tutorial. Copy that down. We'll, let, we'll leave that up for like a day, maybe. We do have a Twig, um, basically like an hour-long Twig video series where you can even like code Twig right inside the browser. Um, so go grab that and uh, kind of like run through that. You can even click around. We kind of go into some deeper areas than I was able to go through here, and you guys can actually practice it without needing to, you know, pull Twig down or try to get Drupal 8 set up or something like that. So um, questions? Yeah. Uh, are there plans? Excuse me. Uh, are there plans for a uh, Devel integration? For what integration? For a Devel integration. I don't know what that is. Devel? Uh, it's the development module. Thank you. Google. Yeah, you got to, yeah. See, it's it's a, from the Symphony world. Yeah, bug a Drupal person about that, or do you know? I do not know. Yeah, yeah. Fine. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. Yep. Ryan? Yeah. If people would go to the mic, because I believe this session is being recorded. Oh, yeah. People will watch later can hear the question. Good job, man. All right. If you have a question, make your way to the mic. That's a DrupalCon Pro right there. On the um, <clears throat> the, the the for loops yeah. you, with the loop variable, mm -hmm. how does it handle nested for loops? Oh, good, good. There's a um, uh, if I remember correctly, it's on the docs. But it's like loop dot previous or something like that, where you can actually say, "Give me the loop." It's always the loop variable is always the one you're most uh, you're closest in. But there's a way to go to the parent. Like, I think it might be loop dot parent. And then you can technically go loop dot parent dot parent. If you go up about three or so, you have other problems. <laughs> you know? Thank you. Yeah, good question. I actually just wanted to answer the question about Devil because I've used um, perfect <laughs> Twig and Drupal eight. Um, Devil is actually working with Twig. Um, it has its own function called Kint that lets you print out stuff very similar to how you print out stuff in Devil and Drupal seven. So awesome! Yeah, thank you very very much. Go Drupal community. Other questions, complaints, birthday wishes. All right, cool. Well, thank you guys very very much for staying this late. And see you guys later. Thanks for coming.